For rubber is our next category that we're going to discuss. So natural rubber comes from plantations. Synthetic rubber, or SBR or SR, comes from crude oil or natural gas for ethylene, styrene, butadiene. For the mining portion of it, you do have fillers that are mined in sulfur. When you compound and cure that, you mix that with the fillers, with the natural rubber or the synthetic rubber. Most floorings are made from synthetic rubber, sulfur, and additives. You do the optional coating for flooring because all rubber does not have a coating. And you can create flooring and many other types of products within, within that from that compounded rubber. The ASTM standards that are utilized are rubber sheet flooring ASTM F1859 or 1860. And basically the difference is, is that 1859 is rubber flooring without backing and 1860 is with backing. Rubber tile is, is, has its own ASTM test methodology, ASTM F1344 for, for performance. This production line looks at uh, rubber in terms of how it is made. It is also a calendared product and, and it's vulcanized through a process. The vulcanization process also includes adding heat to that and is then calendared into uh, sheet flooring and the sheet flooring is then uh, can be cut into tiles if it's, it's rubber tile or it can be left in sheet form. So rubber tile usually has an optional polyurethane layer, but it's vulcanized rubber composition includes speckles, chips, or granulated rapidly renewable surface materials depending on the product composition. There is also a sheet product that it would be similar. It's very similar to what you have, except it's in sheet form instead of in tile form. Another one to evaluate is also that you can have backing. So the prior slide shows it without backing and the current slide shows it with backing. So what are the advantages to rubber tile and sheet? Strong, tough, and durable. It's water resistant. It has excellent slip resistance. Acoustically, it is quiet underfoot and also prov promotes underfoot comfort. It also can be heat welded with integral coat base like other types of sheet products that we have already discussed. would like to show you this restoration of rubber uh, technology because I think it's important to understand what happens to a product once it's installed for many years and is it possible to restore it and bring it back to its, its original uh, performance as well as aesthetic. In this RHC technical video, we'll demonstrate restoration maintenance of a textured rubber tile floor. For this video, we're demonstrating on a floor installed about 10 years ago and has many coats of old acrylic floor finish and combined with soil, gives the flooring a yellow appearance. Unlike some other resilient flooring materials like VCT, rubber flooring does not need a floor finish. We'll be removing the finish and not reapplying. We are using Excelsior PR930 Performance Finish Remover mixed at a ratio of 32 ounces to a gallon of water. PR930 is a finish remover specifically designed to remove topically applied acrylic floor finishes from resilient flooring products that are sensitive to alkalinity, such as rubber flooring. Apply a liberal amount of the diluted PR930 with a sprayer. Allow the solution to dwell for 10 to 15 minutes to emulsify the finish. It's important to not allow the diluted chemical to dry on the flooring. Using a rotary floor machine with a Malgrit scrub brush attachment, scrub the floor in an overlapping circular pattern to help achieve an even scrub across the flooring material. We're using a brush today because this rubber flooring is textured. Brushes perform better than traditional floor pads on textured flooring as the pads do not get down into the valleys of the texture. Note that the floor will be very slick with the emulsified finish, and this can be dangerous for anyone walking on the solution. So wet floor signs and blocking off the area is critical. Use a wet vacuum to remove the slurry. In tight spaces, it may be necessary to use a squeegee to move the solution inward in order for it to be removed with the wet vacuum. Do not allow the solution to dry, as you will need to restart if it does. If the flooring material is still soiled or has residual finish, repeat the process. It's not uncommon to have to perform the scrubbing process more than once in a restoration or stripping situation. Once the floor is completely dry and cool, 
use the white Tampico brush or equivalent to dry buff the floor to achieve the natural shine that is desired. This allows you to see that rubber tile and it can be restored back, but also the fact of that longevity and product service life that we talked about earlier, that you can actually have a product that's 10 years old that can then be restored back to another 10 years worth of durability. Again, we look at the subfloor and wanting to know that those job site conditions and subfloor prep are critical, and we know that it's successful for this installation. You'll see one photo there that actually is, is stripping off and scraping off all of the old adhesive that was on a flooring that was previously installed to get that back down to a smooth substrate before installing rubber tile and sheet or any other resilient product.